name, what that mean? G-O-D. Okay. Huh? Look in the mirror, look in the mirror. What do you see? I see me, what that mean? G-O-D. I look into the mirror, I see Jesus in myself. Okay. I'm trying to get in heaven, I can't do this thing myself. I can't. All the water, do not use me as a swim. I need laws, I need counsel, I need more than just the will. I'm on Paul time, not Paul time. Y'all words speaking, it's awful. And it's a mall line for this call line. Boy, y'all ain't in this awful. It's a full deal for that pot fool, and that's not cool for the lawful. I advise you to let light shine, for he off you. Pastor, 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 I've been looking for you. I need you to tell the me. I heard you can walk on water. Could you show me that they think? I heard you been taking ties, and you're not.
drops in my eyes. The sun, I couldn't wait them, but now I can tell them why. Can't you to the coat? My motive, I was a hustler. They ain't broke with no ends. My friends, I couldn't trust them. Running in the fast lane. No, I got me trying to bust me. Had a job, working hard. Nine to five, what you couldn't it probably good if I wasn't trying to live the bad life. Falling in the fast lane. Caught up in the dope, but they ain't dope. They ain't dope. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, we on, we on. Hey, Israel, we're going to stand up and face Jerusalem and send these righteous prayers up. All right, go ahead. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 36. Have mercy upon us, O Lord God of all, and behold us. And send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations, and let them see thy power. And thou wast sanctified in us before them. So be thou magnified among them before us. And let them know thee, as we have known thee, that there is no God but only thou, O God. Show new signs, and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Raise up indignation, and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Make the time short. Remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful works. Let him that escape him be consumed by the rage of the fire. And let them perish that oppress the people. Smite is thunder the head of the rulers of the heathen that say, There is none other but we. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. O Lord, have mercy upon the people. That is called by thy name, and upon Israel, whom thou hast named thy firstborn. O be merciful unto Jerusalem, thy, thy holy city, the place of thy rest. Fill Zion with thine unspeakable oracles, and thy people with thy glory. Give testimony unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning, and raise up prophets that have been in thy name. Reward them that wait for thee, and let thy prophets be found faithful. O Lord, hear the prayers of thy servants according to the blessings of Aaron over thy people. That all they which dwell upon the earth may know that thou art the Lord, the eternal God. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, O Lord, asking for your grace, your mercy, Father God. 
Father God, bless the entire nation of Israel, Father God, with your word to go out into this world and do the whole duty of man, O oh Lord. Lord, everybody that's sick among us, everybody that has any type of elements in their body, Father God, swiftly and speedily, Father God, heal them and put them in a right state of mind as well as their spirit, Father God. Lord, we want to ask for all mercy, for all grace. Grant us in this time and the time to come. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Men of Israel, blow trumpets real quick. All right, Israel. Had to get it in. I forgot it at the beginning. Y'all forgive me. All right, so we got another class. We got another class, man. Daily bread early in the morning. Giving y'all what y'all need spiritually to go throughout your day so that you can be prepared to fight Satan. All right, so we're going to start, we're going to jump it off real quick because we got a lot to cover and we got a little time to do it in. All right, so um, we're going to jump it off with a video, Israel. Hey, I know y'all love videos. We're going to jump it off straight with a video um, and going into the class. The class is called From Gods to Homos. So it's a certain agenda that they got out against the so-called Blacks, Hispanic, and Native American men. And we're going to dive into it today. Hey, get that. Hey, read the disclaimer real quick. Yeah, we got to read the disclaimer real quick. Do we got it? Hold the video real quick. We're going to read the disclaimer. Do I have a disclaimer? Oh, dang, I ain't even got my wallet. So, right there. Right there, right there. Disclaim on the TV. I right, read that speedily. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harms to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. All right, you heard it, Israel, like you hear it all the time. All right, so we're going to jump right into it. Hey, play that video. Started at 420, and we're going to ride out for about an hour, 10, 15 minutes. Don't come with y'all, Israel. We go, we, we, just be patient with us. Just be patient. And I disregard the say Israel. I heard myself on, on the class or four chapters that I ain't sound the best. Yeah, it's all right up there. Just go straight to 420, I think. Pharisee, there is to a degree. Like, when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I now, this is for all the people that desire to be in the industry. In the industry, they got their own little secret society, their own little rituals. Hey, and if you want to be um, a part of it, certain things and stipulations you must go through. And uh, this Dave Chappelle, he's kind of going into it uh, a little bit, but not too much, not in depth. Because um, hey, those people will kill you. And they'll expose you. A lot of these guys have tapes on themselves um, with Esau basically holding it back to use it against them if they, to, if they were to speak out to um, a certain measure. So they got to be calculated in their words and, um, and their actions as well. All right, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, Martin, I'll be connecting them. They're like, wow, these brothers got to wear a dress. Brothers. That's happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because 
there's a dress in here. They get over. She like, you sure you want to talk in. about this day? It's the writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> and he put this dress on. And it, huh? What? The prostitute? No, nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with that. That should have been in a discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We're supposed to shoot. Every every minute you waste costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Ha! Huh. He said, I'm, nah, I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? You know, we're going like this. And then finally, he's like, ah! And he, he leaves. And then, like, the director comes, Dave. It really would be great if you wear the dress. What is wrong? What is this? A uh, broke back mountain in here? So. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put it right there. Y'all get the gist of it. Y'all get the gist of it. Just know, hey, there is a agenda into turning black men to feminine women and demasculizing them. And he's he was going into it, how they get all of the masculine um, black men to basically dress up like women or to wear a wig or to put a skirt or a dress on and um you know, as you read the scriptures, you know that these words in this Bible, they are spiritual and they are life. And when God gave us a dress code, he knew that it was a spirit in the dress code that he gave us. So we got to be cautious of how we roll. All right. So from there, you got and we got several plots. We got several plots and agendas that's against the so-called black, Hispanic and Native American man, because they know once they take the mind, and the spirit in the in the body of the man, they can do away with our entire nation. All right, so from there, get that um the next video. And we're gonna come back to the homosexual agenda. But we gotta dive into something real quick. Get that lobby um video. And we're going to start it at, start it at 2 minutes and 10 seconds um, within this video. Because remember, Israel, there's an agenda. There are secret plots that are being set against us. That's the reason why we can't be, we can't be busy trying to fight against each other. Trying to, you know, we got discord being sown. We got other groups that's going against us that claim that they Israel, like we supposed to be having our mind stayed on serving the law, statutes, and commandments. But, you know, there's Americanized Negroes are created. In the new edition of The Lobby, we investigate the role of pro-Israel advocacy groups in this country in the first of a four-part series, how the lobby is being drawn into Israel's covert campaign to spy on American citizens. Using an undercover reporter, Al Jazeera's investigative unit infiltrates one of the most powerful lobbies in the world. Getting $38 billion in security agents for all matters, which is what they practice. We examine how, how the lobby led by AKAC, the American Israel million. Public Affairs Committee, has secured unwavering support in Congress. Congressmen don't do anything unless you pressure them. And the only way to do that is with money. They said Congress don't move unless they pressure them with money. is to make sure that Israel gets special treatment from the United States. Hey, pause there. You hear what he said? He said, read, uh, go back to that. I said, read it. Go back like five seconds. This is what the agenda is with, in regards to what they're bringing out right now. Yeah, just play it. Listen, you pressure them. And the only way to do that is with money. 
What the lobby is all about is to make sure that Israel gets special treatment from the United States forever. Forever. They got that old but after money. occupying Palestinian lands for half a century, the pro-Israel lobby is facing a new challenge. We called for a full boycott of Israel, divesting from it, and eventually imposing sanctions on it to achieve UN stipulated rights of the Palestinian people. Alright, now stick a movement there to boycott and go divest to 411. Sanctions on Israel. Go to 411 BDS was formed on and go from capital. 411 to 442. Logical campaign involving spying and smears. You discredit the messenger as a way of discrediting the message. So listen, just listen. stay on message. And what is that message? BDS is a hate, hate, hate movement. Hate movement. Pause well, it real quick. Pause it real quick because we want to dissect. They, their job is to demonize any organization that goes or speak contrary to Israel, and to label them a hate movement. Don't that sound familiar? Why are we number three on a hate group list? And we have no, but they have no proof in regards to any crimes that have been committed or anything. But yet they would publicize it to the media and to the mass of the people as if we've committed crimes. As if, if they have one act on us, they don't have it, Israel. It's all because this is the the um, secret plots behind the scene in regards to their agenda that they moving against us. All right, so was that? Did it go to? Yeah, keep on going. That ain't 442 yet. Israel groups. He was asked to go undercover for the lobby. You're going into enemy territory. Not for everybody. So here, undercover agent. So that's the reason why that um, we was, he was able to get this documentary going. So the convert law, I mean the, the covert law, pause that real quick. Look up the word covert, covert, because all people may not understand what that entails. Just Google it and put in covert definition. Let's see what pops up. It says the covert war, what type of war that um these people are at and who are they at war with because clearly they got all the money they sending money they aid in israel you know they america is the strongest um that america is the strongest kingdom in the earth right now just like ancient egypt but look that word up covert because we need to know what they saying because one a lot of time um, Esau, they like to speak in code with um, these high-defined words that the average Negro don't know what's going on. Read that right there. It says, covert. It says, not openly ag acknowledged or displayed. So in it, not, can't no blow joy, average, um, no average guy just be able to go into be in those meetings. That's the reason why he had to go undercover. And his his knowledge and skill set for for the Israel um lobbies, it had to be a certain level because you just can't get in. It also says some of the similar words, it says secret. So covert is another word for secret, a secret war. Who do you think the secret war is against? Yes, you right, Israel. It's against you, and it is against me and all of us that know that we are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, God's kids, God's heritage. The war is against us, so we got to wake up because the war is on. All right, so go back. Let that video ride to 634. And we got to shed light. And when we shed light on these things, we can't get put back to sleep easily, Israel. We got to understand that we are indeed at war. But play that. We are a different government. We are a different government on working soil. on foreign American soil. 
and we have to be very, very cautious. We have three different sub campaigns which campaigns are very, very sensitive. And it's sensitive. This regarding data gathering, information data analysis, gathering information. working on activist working organization, on money trail. Working on Israel. This is something that only a I country with its resources IUIC. can do the best. Money trail. So, hey, pause it real quick. Listen. For all you brothers that's over the Treasury Department in Israel United in Christ, I'm talking to you right now. They coming after us. So you need to make sure that everything is lining up so when they come, there is nothing that goes in opposition of what they are trying to come up against us with. Because they're going to come out the finances because every organization that all people are in the midst of, guess what? They are embezzling money, and we don't roll like that. So everything need to be in the clear. They telling you right now, this is how they roll. This is the these are the plots and the secret plans that they make behind closed doors. But we get too lax and comfortable, and we think that everything is gonna be all right. Yeah, if you got all your paperwork and your documents, like the scripture said, get everything in right. Have all that stuff lined up. We won't have to worry about this when they come against us. But read on. I mean, play on. These are the strategies that they have. If you want to win, we have to change our ways. We have to think differently. And this is waging a holistic campaign against the other side. The other Taking side is IUIC. Make him be on the defensive. Make him that Israel him is, is involved IUIC. in a secretive influence campaign whose aim is to discredit its challenges in the West. Like they discredit us now. In the Air Force, when you want to win, you have to have aerial superiority. If you want to win a campaign, you must have information superiority. Yeah. And this is exactly the added value they gather Israel information on us. Technological people. and otherwise, we can bring to the game, and we are working on that very hard. Mm. Why? In because the we got them up losing the sleep is at working night. With Israel they lose the sleep American at citizens. night because of us, because of the work of the Lord that we put in. Uh, the data, for example, one day you see as the T sending me a photo, just a photo in WhatsApp. Now, pause. Look at this photo. Now, although they trying to make it seem like it's about this, but who else got billboards up with Israel United in Christ up there? No other Israelite camp, not that I know of, not that I've seen, that has a billboard with our information on it. Who are they talking about? Israel. Hey, we got to wake up. These folks, that's why when you see stuff like this, yeah, it said boycott Israel. But really, you got to look, look at it from a spiritual standpoint. Boycott Israel united in Christ. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to have the people to boycott us, to go against us. So when they go against us, by them basically forming laws and then them mistreating us, it'll be justified because y'all turned on us. When we ain't did nothing but help our people. We got so many different, um, different ways of how we help our people, first spiritually, and then we can go into the backdrop of everything else. But you have to be in in order to understand what we're talking about. But go ahead on, play on. And boy put Israel on a billboard. In like a few hours, our systems and analysts could find the exact organization, people, and even their names where they live. Hey, you hear that though, the Israel? Look, hey, I think that's it on it. I think that's 63480. Look, they said we can find out where you stay at. We can, they can find our jobs. They can find our names. They can find our face recognition. That's why, hey, y'all brothers and sisters that post a lot, y'all doing all this posting on Facebook. You posting, hey, today I woke up, I ate eggs and grits. Folks know what you ate. They know where you went. They know what, 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 what your, your whole family look like. You put your whole family on the Internet. You better stop that because it'll be used against you later on in the court of law. And everything you say could be used against you. So, hey, listen, they showing you they plots, the tricks that they play. All right, go from there. Go to 708. And we're going to go from 708 to 831. 
So I want y'all to know, hey, hey, this is war, and they ain't talking about nobody but us. What other black, uh, so-called black, Hispanic, and Native organization at the movement that we are, are, the moves that we are making in the earth right now, who else doing it? The marches that, that's going on, all of these things that the Lord is putting in the spirit of the leaders that's here so that we could put fear in the heathens that are round about. We fulfilling Ezekiel 37. He going to raise us up in the midst of them. And there ain't nothing they gonna be able to do about it. Are right, we ready to? Yeah, it ain't nothing they gonna be able to do about it, Israel. That's why the kingdom is within you. That Luke 17, it 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 listen, that should put another um level of faith on you. Because the kingdom lie within you. The kingdom lie within me. So it's it's um very very important for us to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. We shake up the earth, Israel. Ain't nobody able to do it but us. Because guess what the heathens do? They'll stop everything. All Whatever they got going on, whatever their agenda was before this, look, they said, look, put everything on pause and let us deal with the BHI community because that's what they call us. But they know we refer to ourselves as the Israelite, but they do it. 708. Started at 708, and we're going to go from 708 to 831. Nah, you should have left it at 703 right there. You can just start it right there. And after this, we're going to jump into some scriptures to explain this behavior of the heathen in the scriptures. Stuff me here. In terms of, like, information sharing, we, we did add the Ministry of Strategic Affairs to our operations and, and intelligence brief. Trying to go back to how do we get information about how they get information campuses. Go on to campuses and watch what tactic they Generally use. Within about 30 seconds or less of one of these things popping up on campus, whether it's a Facebook event, whether it's the right kind of mention on Twitter. Look, they'll mention some on Twitter and alerts our researchers and they evaluate it, uh -huh. they tag it, and if it rises to a certain level, we issue early warning alerts to our partners. They operate through subterfuge, and they walk a very thin line between the legal and illegal in what they do in order to gather information and this to smear their opponents and just ultimately destroy them. And destroy them. That's what they want. They want, to dis they, they want this movement to be destroyed, but it'll never be destroyed because it is not a movement of man. It is indeed the movement of the Most High God. It ain't no, it, it ain't no going away. We ain't going nowhere. We are here to stay until you kill us. And we prepare for that because we know when we die, that ain't the end. That's just the beginning. But play on. I got to start letting the video just play all the way out. Obtain information publicly uh -huh. he should try to get into the room through other means our undercover reporter tony is british and jewish and had recently graduated from the university of oxford he wrote articles and presented himself as a strong supporter of israel in washington he attended a course on the israel palestine conflict i'm from the uk and I, i'm just taking a course at georgetown here over the summer he networked in the social circles of the pro-israel lobby all these people are After happy to his profile, to Tony was accepted on a training course in pro-Israel advocacy. Welcome to Feel for Truth DC's second boot camp. They got a whole boot camp. Everyone to being accepted. 
What we're gonna do right now is uh, just kind of like introduce ourselves. I'm Daniel. After undergrad, I served in the IDF you for your first name two too. years and worked at ADF for a year. One session criticized the UN agency that provides aid for Palestinians. Children are taught in UNRWA Palestinian schools to hate Jews. Look, Another lecture the dealt with the international to hate media. Confronting media bias. During the last war, a lot of times videos are circulating uh, of you know, uh, bombed areas or victims. Watch how long ago. Syria from Iraq 10 years ago. It said 10 years in ago. They got videos they of stuff happening 10 years ago. And they had you believe and, uh, that that stuff is going on uh, current. Walls cutting up Palestine. Boycott Israel. Divest from Israel. Sanction uh, companies that do business with Israel. It's kind of odd to call it a wall. This is a photo. I see a wall. Why can't Israel do more? So he asked him, why Israel can't Our do more? Our undercover reporter played the role of pro-Israel advocate. Israel is doing a lot to help the Palestinians. They say, actually, Israel is doing all the best that they can. But, you know, it's a tough situation. The people, businesses in Gaza can't, can't freely send their trucks into Israel to sell their goods. I think you'll find that that's actually a misconception. They do allow their trucks, and what they don't allow is, is dangerous material. Okay, stop. So hey, we we're, we're cut the course, that, cut Tony was feet. accepted as a volunteer at a So like I said, we are indeed at war. Give me that in Ephesians 6 verse 12 and verse 13. We're going to read both verses, get into the scriptures and break down this of uh, what we just saw. Because um we Yeah, yeah, that's that's it on the video. Um we know the plots and plans that the other nations set the most I say he's going to set their tongue against themselves. But we know what type of person that we we dealing with. A vile, ineffectual person. You know, so read that. Read what you got. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6 and verse 12. Uh-huh. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So there ain't no need for us fighting amongst each other because there's a bigger war at hand. What war? We just, we just saw it. The covert war. The secret war that they are plotting, planning against this movement, Israel united in Christ. And the other brothers, too. All of the other camps, guess what? They're going to put us in all one big group together. So when they pass laws against us, those same laws go for you. When they, when they plot and, 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 and set up certain, um, certain sanctions against us to where we can't move, we losing our jobs, you're going to lose your jobs as well. Why? Because we busy, y'all busy want to fight against us when the war is already against us. We already know we got the black woman against us. We got our, our brothers against us. We got the, all the other heathen nations against us. What are we fighting about? We need to be focusing on the Lord and what he commanded us to do. And then with that, the Lord will give us the understanding on how to move until he sent his son back to save us. That's what it's all about. Read on. But against principality, uh -huh. against powers, against powers of what? Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Because the people that's in this, the people that's in this world that got powers, guess what? They do things in dark. That's the reason why it's a covert war. It's a secret war. They doing things behind closed doors to where the public is not familiar with the tactic that they using to come against us. So when it when when it when it fall out to where um, they, they get to implement thing. Guess what they, they just going to be sitting back in the shadows with their hands behind their back. When knowing that they started the whole thing, then they're going to try to come in and implement a way to solve it. That's what they do. They create a problem, and then later on, once they see it getting out of hand, they come with the solution when the solution is to destroy the entire movement. So they think. But read on. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Uh -huh. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what we're up against. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Places that you can't lay eyes on. Read. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God. Uh -huh. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. In today's time. This is the evil day. Read. And having done all to stand. So we still got to st stand. We still got to stand on what? Stand on the word of God. Stand on principles. Stand on morals. Stand on laws. Integrity. 
These are the things we got to stand on. All right? Like the scripture said, who would stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? We chose this job. And we got to carry it out. All right, go from there to 2 Corinthians 10 and 3 through 5. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 3rd verse, the 4th verse, and the 5th verse. So we'll know what we're up against. Because some people may think, oh, it's a war. It's a war. Well, what kind of war is it? It ain't that kind of war, Israel. It ain't that kind of war. This the kind of war we're about to read about that it is. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter three, 10 and verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, uh -huh. we do not war after the flesh. We don't war after the flesh. It ain't time to, to take arms up. It ain't time to get knives. It ain't time to get weapons, to gather weapons. Read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. All weapons are not carnal weapons. All weapons is a spiritual weapon. What is that? The Bible. Yes. Read. But mighty through God. And the, the Bible is what? Mighty through God. That's the reason why this ain't no ordinary book. This is a spiritual book. And we activate it with our actions. Read on. To the pulling down of strongholds. Uh-huh. Casting down imagination. That's what we go out there and do when we go out there with the word of God. We pull down strongholds. What are some strongholds? Christmas, Valentine's, Easter, when we know the dang on bunny do not lay eggs. That's a fertility God. You know, animal, I mean, you know rabbits don't do nothing but hump. They don't do nothing but get it in. So guess what? It put that same spirit on our people to go out there and commit fornication. And what that do is spread STDs at an all-time high rate to now chlamydia is everywhere. Gonorrhea is everywhere. Syphilis is everywhere. Blue waffle is everywhere. HIV AIDS is everywhere. All because we follow after man and not after God. Read on. Casting down imagination uh -huh. and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Read. And bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. We're trying to get every thought that don't line up with the word of God and subjugate it and cast it down into being obedient, meaning we're driving our people back to repentance. We're driving our people back to keeping the laws. We're driving our people back to their nationality, showing them, look, you're not an African-American. That term was coined in 1985 by Jesse Jackson. You are an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, Manasseh, Ephraim, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, so on and so forth. Your nationality ain't no African American, and they know that. They came together to destroy that. You can read about it in Psalms 83, where all the nations are at one with destroying that one nation that God chose. You so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans. You just don't know how important you are to your one true God. But hopefully you get it before he sends his son back. All right, from there, we're going to go to Matthew 10. So now that we know, we understand what type of war we're in, we're not in a fleshly carnal war, but a spiritual war, and we're going to cast down the lies of the heathen right before the entire earth with what? The word of God. All right, read that. 10 and 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 16. This is how we're supposed to roll, Israel. Read. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. So now that we know we're not, we're not in a a, a, a physical war, but a spiritual war, we got to roll like this because we in the midst of wolves. We are amongst all the other nations that are at one with destroying us. And they tell us in the media, they didn't publicize it. They didn't did everything that they can to give us all the understanding we need to know. Yeah, they indeed are against us. We try to go out there and tell our people countless of time. But they rebel against the word of God because they are comfortable in the lower state that we in in America. Read on. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. That's what we got to do, Israel. And how do we get wisdom 
out of the word of God. Read. And harmless as those. And we can't think that this fight or this war is a physical fight. We can't get hung up on that. Because some of us will indeed die. We know that the scriptures say it. Christ died. What you think? Christ was going around hugging, giving out teddy bears, and saying all type of love lullabies? No. He said a word that moved people's spirit, that broke bones to where they want to put him to death. And we got to follow the same thing. That's the reason why you know Christ ain't dealing with these Christian churches. Because ain't nobody in there trying to wage war against them like they are with the movement that we are a part of. Ain't nobody going to these churches but us. And we're trying to go in a way where we're provoking thought to move them to repentance. We ain't going on no hostile stuff. We don't roll like that. We're trying to wake our people up to the wisdom and understanding that God has granted in this book. Read on. Oh, no, that's it, ain't it? Oh, I was about to say it, man. Keep reading. But give me Ezekiel 28 and verse 3. Give me Ezekiel. Dude, what's the, why, 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 are the, why are the scriptures telling us to um, be wise as a serpent? Why do we have to move wise, move with caution? The scriptures say you got to move weary, W-A-R-Y, meaning you have to get counsel and move strategically according to how the scriptures say we're supposed to move. You just can't move recklessly because that's going to either cost you your livelihood, your life. One or the other. But read what you got. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 28 and verse 3. So remember, God said move wise as a serpent. But read on. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. Uh huh. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. So this, this is Esau right here, so-called white man. It said he's wiser than Daniel. Ain't no secret that can be hid from him. First off, he's the instrument of God that's used against us to drive us back to repentance. But God had gave him the understanding from Satan on making all of these different inventions with our help, with the help of all people, to where now, you can have um, a thousand people, and Esau would want to keep track of what's going on with those thousand people. Let's just say if you got maybe three, four thousand people that's marsh, and Esau want to keep track. Guess what you will see at the top of the marsh? If you just look up sometime, you'll see a drone. And the drone won't be none of the people that, that's in the marsh because the, they have their own drones. Hint, hint. But you'll see a drone from afar that's just looking just in, a, in a red blinking light from afar. Just pay attention. They have created things to keep watch on all every move. Even when we was reading about the lobbies, the covert war, where they have um, different agencies to collect all type of data and analysis that they do on us. Why? Because it ain't no secrets hidden from them. They got, they do, the scriptures say they do a diligent search. So it's, it says he's wiser than Daniel. That's the reason why the Lord said, look, be wise as a serpent, but also be humblest as a dove. Why? Because Esau is wiser than the prophet Daniel. And Daniel knew things. He knew prophecy. He knew the breakdown of different kingdoms that hadn't even manifested in the earth yet. But guess what God said? Esau, he's going to be wiser than Daniel. All right, so from there, Go to Ecclesiasticus, Sirach 51, verse 2. Because we got to get the breakdown of, of the plots that they planning against us. First, they discredit you. Then they deem you as hateful or a hate group. Then, with no proof, they blame you of unproven crimes. And that's what they've been doing and continue to do against us. Why? Because this message right here, it's like no other message. You can pronounce in the earth that you are a Muslim. You can pronounce in the earth that you practice Buddha. You can announce in the earth that you are under the Krishna God. You are a Jehovah Witness. You are in the midst of Christianity. And there will be no movement spiritually in the earth to shake the nations. But when you say 
the so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native American are indeed the biblical Jews. They are the biblical Israelites, the people of the book. Guess what? That sent a spiritual earthquake in the earth to the nations. And they get fearful and they come up with tactics to come against us. They put this fear of God in them. So that lets you know that this movement is like no other movement. This is the last movement on earth that will stand forever. Yes, forever, forever, ever, and ever, ever. It ain't going to end, Israel. We're going to rule until forever. I right, get that. Get that in Sirach 51 verse 2. The book of Ecclesiastes or Sirach. Chapter 51 and verse 2. Look at the attribute of this heathen nation and the other heathen nations that we deal with. Read what you got. For thou art my defender and helper. Christ and the Most High. That's who defending us. That's who grant us the mercy and grace that they give us up until he sent Christ back to destroy this earth with the help of the Israelites. The Israelites. Yeah. It's going to be war time. All right. Read on. As preserved uh -huh. our body from destruction. And God going to preserve our body from destruction. Does that mean we ain't going to get killed? No. That means some of us going to die at the hand of the enemies. But guess what? We going to rise again, Israel. Read on. And from the snare of the slanderous tongue. From the snare of the what? Of the slanderous tongue. So we know that they plots and plan is to slander us in the media amongst the whole entire world. That's how they did Christ. Oh, he said he the king of the Jews. Oh, he's oh he's on the cross, but he can't he save others, but he can't save himself. That's the same thing that we gotta go through when we saying we follow the Christ. Read on. And from the lips that forge lies, uh huh, and have been my helper against it, mine adversary. It said the lips that do what? Forge lies. That's what they do, Israel. They forge lies against us. You ain't seen nothing yet. They just warming up. They just plotting and planning strategically so they can roll out the plan. Read on. Verse 3. And hath delivered me according to the multitude of thy mercy. And that's what they're going to do. The most high going to have to deliver us according to that. Mercies of him. All right, go drop that. And give me Psalms 94, verse, verse 20 and verse 21. We're going to read, speed read. We've got to speed it up. It's already 745. Good God. Yeah, 94, verse 20 21. And then we're going to go to the most hated scripture in the entire earth by the Israelis and the Jewish community. Yes, I said it. It is what it is. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, and verse 20. Uh -huh. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, uh -huh. which frameth mischief by a law? What they do against us? Frameth mischief by a law. So the first step they're going to do, they're going to have a slanderous tongue, and they're going to forge lies against us. Then they're going to start to create laws that goes contrary to our movement. And they're going to do it by mischief because the power is in their hand. And the Lord ain't letting nothing but all of their wickedness add on up. So when he come down here, he ain't coming as a man. Like Isaiah 47 said, he ain't going to meet them as a man. And how they crucified and killed him and put away his flesh and blood on the cross, they ain't going to do that the next time he is the same. Read on. Verse 21. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. That's what they do. They gather themselves against us because we the soul of the righteous. We the ones that's keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments. Like the scriptures say, read. And condemn. And do what? And condemn. That's their plan, to condemn what? The innocent blood. Because we innocent. We just want to keep our law, statutes, and commandments. To live peacefully amongst all the nations. We're a loving group. We're a caring group. But we're so busy and occupied with loving on our own people because they are so messed up. We ain't got no room to focus on no other nation. We are in this predicament because of us. So this ain't no type of movement saying, oh, it's the white man, it's the white man, it's the white man. No, it's the so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native American because we got ourselves in this condition. And the only way we're going to get us out 
is if we do what God said we was going to do. We said all that you said we would do. We said that. So we got to live up to our word. Blood in, blood out. Gang, gang. Read that in Revelation 2, verse 9. The most hated scripture in the earth right now. The it, book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 9. Read. I know thy works uh -huh. and tribulation uh -huh. and poverty. So he can't be talking about them because they, right when we read the document, it said they get so many millions and billions of dollars aided to Israel, to the Israelis, to the Jewish community. Read on. But. Thou art rich. But we are rich because Romans 9 and 6 tell us, 9 and 5, somewhere up in there, the kingdom belong to us, the promise belong to us, the covenant belong, the covenants belong to us, the old and the new covenant. All of that, all of that stuff pertain to only Israel that's keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Read on. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. Now who in the earth proclaiming themselves to be the Jews that's occupying the land? Who else doing that? Who else got the power to do that? Read on. And are not. And God said they what? And are not. Why is God telling us that they are not? Because you can't go history for history to prove out of the Bible or in world history that you are indeed the real Jews or the Israelites that the Bible speak of. But yet they would discredit us. But they would never come with no type of proof. None whatsoever. Read on. But are the synagogue of Satan. So that's what God called them. We ain't got to call you no names. We ain't got to hate you because God, when he said what he said, it stands. And it ain't nothing that we can do about it. What the hell is this? This brother here, man. Read on. Read on. Verse fear 10. none of these things. It says what? Fear none of these things. But we can't fear none of those things. Read. Which thou shalt suffer. Uh-huh. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Now, it says that there was a synagogue of Satan, meaning they got power to cast us into prisons. Who owned all of the prison? Who owns over the prison? Because we're not. I think Michael Jordan may own some stock in a prison, but all, who own all of the private prison? The prison that's government funded. Not us. So who can it be talking about? That lets you know, Israel. God giving you clues on who it's talking about. It can't be talking about us because we ask our people countless day in, day out. What's your nationality? Oh, African-American, black, more. Everything under the Son of God but what's in the Bible. They don't know their nationality. They don't understand that this book is indeed their book, and it's about them, and they need to come back to it quicker than they think. Read on. Bold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, uh -huh. that ye may be tried, mm -hmm. and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Uh -huh. Be thou faithful unto death. See, that's what we don't want to hear that right there. God said be faithful unto death. Why? Because it's everlasting life once they put you to the grave. You got to, we got to be faithful to death. Read on. And I will give thee a crown of life. You can't let nobody take your crown, Israel. We got to be faithful unto death. Like I said, some of us going to be put to death. And that's what we got to go ahead on and get our mind manifest on. We got to meditate daily on that thing. We got to meditate there. Hey, I might see death. And Romans 8.35 tell us how we're supposed to deal with that. Nothing should be able to turn us from the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Especially when we know what's promised to us. When we know we're going to rule the entire earth again. And the manifestation of everything on earth, including the trees, the water, the ozone layer, the sun, everything is waiting on the sons of God to repent and come back to the one true God. Yes, that's how much power we possess. All right, so from there, go to Matthew 24, verse 9. So they're going to cast us in prison. They're going to afflict us. First, they forge, they, 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 they got a slanderous tongue. 
they, they, they forge lies against us. Then they're going to frame a law. And then they're going to cast us into prison. Read on. What's the next step? The book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 9. Uh -huh. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Didn't Christ get delivered up to be afflicted? So we must go through the same thing Christ went through. Read. And shall kill you. And what? And shall kill you. Didn't they kill Christ? But afterward, what happened? He rose. And ye he shall be hated yes. of all nations. And we are hated, like we said in Psalms 83. Because Christ was hated. We are hated. Christ was hated. But why did Christ say that we're going to get delivered and shall be killed? Because what happened to Christ? He rose on the third day. Yeah. So that's going to be for us, too. We're going to get that same. We're going to have the same results with following Christ. Read on. And ye shall be hated of all nations. And all nations already hate us. We already know that. All right, so go to Exodus 19 and verse 5. So we're going to segue back into the topic of the class. From gods to homos. We know they got an agenda against us, but it's different agendas against us. That was one agenda that we just recently went into. Now we're going to go into this agenda, um, this agenda, the homosexual agenda that's against the black man. That against the so-called black man, the Hispanic man, and the Native American man. But read that in Exodus 19, verse 5 through 8. The book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 5. Uh -huh. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above, above. All, all people, for all the earth is mine. God said, I will set you above all people on the face of the earth. Ain't that racist? Ain't that having um, favorites? So what are we talking about? When you read Malachi, God doesn't change. He feels today about us that he felt back then about us. Read on. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. God said we was going to be kingdom, a kingdom of priests. Going into that God that we are. Read on. And in holy nation. In a holy nation, read. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Unto you so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. Read on. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all the words which the Lord commanded him. Uh -huh. And all the people answered together and what, said. What did all the people say? Read. Oh, that the Lord has spoken. We will do. Uh -huh. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. So we made a covenant with the Lord. We chose with our mouth to utter out words to say, all oh, you say, Lord, we going to do it. So the Lord is holding us to it. That's the reason why I don't know other nations get the judgments from the Lord like we do. We the ones that's in the earth that's on the bottom. We the first five, last high. We the one that get laws passed off of the color of our skin and the hatred that these people have for us. We the ones that got our neighborhoods redlined. We the ones are on the bottom of society. And we're going to be there until Christ come back. So it ain't no finance. Uh, we need financial literacy. No, we need the Bible to be littered. We need to take the Bible literally as it says. Thus says the word of God. If God said, we do it. If he said, don't do it, we ain't going to do it. It's easy as that. Read on. No, nah, don't read on. I'm, I'm just like, read on. Hey, go from there. Give me Psalms 82, verse 5. To show you, you so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American men, you are gods. But guess what? For all disobedience, God promised us that we was going to die like men. But we get to rise again when Christ hit the scene. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 5. Read. They know not. Neither would they understand. Uh -huh. They walk on in darkness. Uh -huh. All the foundation of the earth are out of course. Everything is out of course. That's why I said the trees, they getting cut down. E e Esau's cutting down all the female trees. So you got pollen alert, the female, the male trees just busting everywhere. Damn, male trees busting white stuff everywhere, all over the earth. Now you got a pollen alert. Because it's tree sperm every damn well. Why? Because this 
man is throughout the earth destroying everything from the rooted to the tooted, the ozone layer to the trees, the ocean poisoning in the water. He doing everything, doing gene splices with the animals, making all type of viruses in the earth. We got to stop playing with the Lord, Israel. Say we are gods. Read on. Verse 6, I have said, ye are God, Read. and all of you are children of the Most High. Uh -huh. But ye shall die like men Read. and fall like one of the princes. Uh -huh. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. So we're going to inherit all nations when Christ come back. We're going to inherit all nations. Yes, 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 we will. And that's what we're waiting on. we waiting on that day. If it wasn't for payback, guess what? This Bible one had a power that it had, but we, are, we, we serve a just God. Say so what goes around comes around. And these nations know that. That's the reason why they fear that great judge and that great judgment and terrible day. They know that. They know that the Israel, the children of Israel, is going to go back to their book and it's going to be all in and their beginning. That dude said it. Um, what's his name? That, that dude, the Tesla and all that space stuff. Yeah, Elon Musk. He said it. He said they're going to be another dark nation. I mean, another um, dark ages. Yes, he know it. And you need to know it. All right. So from there, give me Genesis 2 verse 18. Because from the beginning, what was it? What was the agenda? God made us God. Yeah, we're going to die like man. But what was behind what God did? And was it right or was it wrong? Yes, everything God do is right. So when we go against it, when we do, in, when we go in opposition of it, we are wrong. When God gave us the floor plan to how it's supposed to be done from the beginning. So we still supposed to be doing it. Some people say, well, the Bible outdated. No, your mind is outdated because you was created in a place called America, Babylon the Great, that the Bible speak of. In Revelation. But read that Genesis 2, 18, and read all the way down to 24. We're going to speed read. Yes, sir. The book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. So God said, look, man, it shouldn't be alone. That's who God create for man. Do God create a man for a man or a woman for a woman? What, what God creation was in the beginning? Read on. I will make him and help me. He said, I'm going to make him a help me. Read. For him, uh -huh. and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field uh -huh. and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave name to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was none found and help me so, for him. So Adam helped me still wasn't found. Read on. And the Lord God called a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and he closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman. Made he a what? Made he a woman. God made a woman for Adam, meaning he made male and female, meaning she comes from the man. He didn't make Adam and Steve. He made Adam and Eve. Get it together. Read on. And brought her unto the man. And he brought her to Adam, meaning man and woman shall be brought together in the righteousness of marriage. Read on. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone uh -huh. and flesh of my flesh. Uh -huh. She shall be called woman. And for you Negroes that think, oh, they didn't have a marriage certificate back then, so we don't need one now. No. We do need one now because God initiated and ordained that marriage. He ain't ordaining that BS that y'all got going on, sleeping with sisters and then go out and sleep with that sister and then go out and sleep with that sister and then talking about some you you um, read in the Bible where it said we, we could have multiple wives. Now, you creating whores out of our sisters. Scripture says there should be no whores in the daughters of Israel in Deuteronomy. Read on. She shall be called woman uh -huh. because she was taken out of man. Read. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Cleave to who? His 
wife. That's how it's supposed to be. In. That's how it was supposed to be. That's how it was back then. That's how it's supposed to be now. Read on. And they shall be one flesh. All right. So is this something new? Is the homosexual agenda new in the earth today? Give me that Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 9. Is this a new behavior from our people? No, because we just cre we just read the creation of man and God created woman for man. So it ain't nothing new under the sun. God knew what he was doing from the start because he knew the mind of the man. He know, look, eventually man going to go contrary to what I put in his book, what I put in his mind to do. So I got to create laws. So why? Why God got laws for humans, but oh, he ain't got no laws for the animals because an uh, animal know I need to mate with the female. The male lion know I need to mate with the lioness. We the only human, we the only people that, that feel like, oh, it's okay to mate with the same creator. I mean a creature. Meaning a man creature with the man creature and a female creature with the female creature. Read what you got. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 and verse 9. Uh -huh. The thing that have been, and that which shall be, mm -hmm. and that which is done, and that which shall be done. Uh -huh. And there is no new thing under the sun. Meaning there is nothing new when it comes to the creation of the man. I think you read that in the 6 and 11 chapter somewhere up in there. But um, as you read further down, it's talking about man. Ain't no new thing under the sun. Everything that man was thinking and going through back then is happening now in the mind of the man. All of those lascivious thoughts, all of those, that, that fornication, that lust and all of those, that, that stuff, it was in the Bible and man was dealing with it then. That's why ain't no sin coming to man now. All right. So from there, go to Genesis 19. Because we're going to read about the homosexual behavior in the Bible and what God did to resolve the homosexual behavior. Read that in Genesis 19, 1 through 4. Speed read it. 1 through 5. The book of Genesis, chapter 19 and verse 1. Uh -huh. and, the, and there came two angels to Sodom at even. Mm -hmm. And Lot said in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my Lord. Turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, uh -huh. and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, Come past the house round. So you got all the men that's in this area, Sodom and Gomorrah. They come from afar, from all of the cities that's around about. And they come to Lot House and come past it round about. Imagine it. You come outside and you see nothing but homosexuals that's ready for boy butt surrounding your house, threatening you. And listen to what they tell Lot. Read. Both old and young, and all the people from every quarter. I apologize. Not boy, but Mangina. Read. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, uh -huh. Where are the men which came in to thee? He said, night? Look, we're looking for the men, and we want the men. Read. Bring them out unto us, uh -huh. that we may know them. That we may what? That we may know they them. They're looking for Mangina. I'm going to tell y'all straight, a lot of y'all know too many men. A lot of y'all know too many women. And that know them meaning you are laying down with the man on man and woman on woman crime. You could That's a crime in God's eyes. He said that's an abomination. God hate that thing. He hate you. But can you turn from that act? Yes. How hard is it for you not to look for mangina? Like, like, like Trump said, oh, that disease come from China. Mangina. We got to get right, Israel. All right, go from there and get me, uh, now nah, go to 6. We're going to read six to, 6 to 11. Speed read for me. Verse 6. Uh -huh. And Lot went out 
at the door unto them uh -huh. and shut the door after them and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wicked. So he pleaded with them, look, please, y'all, look, don't do this wickedness. You got the angels in here. And y'all out here looking for Mangina. Read on. He said, look, I'll give you my two daughters that ain't even laid down with men before. They virgins. Look what they said. Read. Let me, I pray you, bring them out with you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Uh-huh. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof, and they said, stand back. He said, get out of my way. Read. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn. So, hey, listen, well, they belittling like, ah, look at this sojourner. You ain't even from this land. You come from another land. Look at this sojourner coming in there. He here trying to tell us that we shouldn't desire the China of a man. They want to create some rectile dysfunction. Read what you got. And he will need be a judge. Uh-huh. And now. he, he going to judge us now? And he ain't even from this area? Read. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. Hey, now we're going to do worse to you than we thought to do to him. So we thought to just lay down with them angels. But see, Lot, we might even go to the point where we want to run a train on you, Lot. You got to think the bizarreness, the level of wickedness that's on these men and mine. Because when you fully committed to your wickedness, it ain't nothing but one thing that can put you in the right perspective, and that's death. That's it. Read on. And they pressed sore upon the man, uh -huh. even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. So they try to break the door down. Now, I ain't saying that this is what went on with the men trying to basically run a train on. But I'm just giving some type of imagery to what, the, what wickedness would go to, the depths of wickedness that the man would go to. Read on. And they smote the men mm -hmm. that were at the door of the house with blindness. Uh huh. So they, now they blind. They can't see. They ain't got. They got vision impairment that's going on right now. They can't see nothing. Took the blind. They took the sight straight out of their eyes. But look at the behavior still of these men. Read. Both small and great. Uh huh. So that they worried themselves. They worried to, themselves. They still trying to find. They still trying to figure out what these men that they still trying to. Fulfill the lust of their flesh. Read. So that they wear it themselves to find the door. They wear it themselves. Get that in Romans 6, verse 12, real quick. Let me show you what was being fulfilled with these men, these young men and older men. And then we're going to go into getting some examples of this stuff in today's time. That's why the people, it, listen, the people that say, oh, the Bible is outdated. No, the Bible is more relevant than it was ever before in earth. Today it is. Read what you got. The book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That's what was going on. They let sin reign in a mortal body. Read. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. And they obeyed the lust much rather than obey the laws. That's what all people got to understand. Either you're going to obey something. You're going to either obey the lust that you have and fulfill it, or you're going to obey the laws of the Most High God that you stated with your mouth spiritually that you was going to keep. All right, from there, go to uh, Romans 6, verse 23. Because if you continue to obey the lust thereof, if you continue to let sin reign in your mortal body, what are your wages? What's going to be your payback when Christ come and hit the scene? Read what you got. The book of Romans, chapter 6, and verse 23. Uh -huh. For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. That's your payback. We're talking about the big payback. Everybody got to die. Yeah, you can say that. But after death, what's going to happen to your soul? Do your God tell you that, that you believe in? What does Krishna tell you going to happen after you die? What Buddha tell you? Huh? What the Muslim, what Muhammad tell you? You going to have the virgins after you die? No, nah, it's going to be pain and affliction when you die, after you die. Read on. But the gift of God. Is eternal life. Because what? You get to live forever, forever, ever, forever, ever. Read. Through Jesus Christ, And it only Lord. can be obtained through Jesus Christ, the, the son of the most high God that he sent. So if you reject Christ, you ain't rejecting us. 
It says that in First Thessalonians. You ain't rejecting man. You rejecting Christ because we are just the messengers. We got to fulfill what the words say. So what? So we can inherit the kingdom of heaven. All right. From there, go to Genesis 19 and verse 12. Read that real quick. Genesis 19 and verse 12. The book of Genesis, chapter 19 and verse 12. Uh-huh. And the man said unto Lot, Has thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city? Mm -hmm. Bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place. We will what? We will destroy this place. And God is going to destroy this place. Because just like the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah was at an all-time high and committing all manner of wickedness with man on man, women on women, that's what's going on in America. And I wonder who passed that law. Hmm. Read on. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. Because we are crying to the most high God. To have mercy on us, but in that day, most likely, Lord, look, please have mercy on us. We need your mercy and grace because this place is a disgrace. Read. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And the Lord sent them to destroy it. Just like when Christ come back with the gang of angels, it's going to be time to destroy this place. All right, jump from there to 21st. Verse 24. Verse 24. Uh-huh. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire uh -huh. from the Lord out of heaven. So that ain't the first time that the earth at that in that particular area is going to receive fire from heaven. It's going to be another time where earth is going to receive fire from heaven. And it's going to be the nuclear bomb that God had the so-called white man to create. Create what? To destroy him and everything in the earth that's not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments that are the 12 tribes of Israel. All right, so from go there, go there, give me the images. Give me the current images, today's images of Sodom and Gomorrah. Stay in Genesis, because we're going to read 25 on down. We're going to get the images. We're going to see how Sodom and Gomorrah looks today i'm gonna go on here and tell you look solomon and gomorrah look probably about the same as um the bottom of your barbecue grill nothing but ashes from ashes to ashes dust to dust just a big pile of ash and they said um esau said i forgot what chemical does it um the, um does it have they had a sofa it's a sofa, and it has a chemical that you can basically light it up, and it says it's the purest sofa in the earth. It ain't cut. It's 100% pure sofa. So God ain't playing. He left signs. He left signs of Noah Ark. He left signs of Solomon and Gomorrah. He left signs all over the earth. The temple being destroyed in, being destroyed in Israel, and the Israelis, the Jewish people, guess what they do? They go and build a wall. It ain't the same dang on wall. And put their little papers in it and make wishes. God ain't hearing those wishes. He ain't hearing those prayers. It's falling on deaf ears. Now, what you can pray, you can pray that the Lord give the kingdom back to the rightful owners. And, and you can be boot shiners in the kingdom for all about a thousand years. Then after that, it's over with for you. But, hey, it is what it is. Y'all got them images. All right, go ahead. What Sodom and Gomorrah look like? Let's look at the displacement of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, they had an ancient illustration of it. We can go into looking at that, but we want to see the current images. Yeah, just scroll up. Man, I'm going to have to hurry up. Boy, God, Lee, time ain't on nobody's side. I right, scroll on up, on up, on up, right there. Yeah, click on that picture and make it be the rain. The Lord rained down burning sofa, uh-huh, sulfur or whatever that word is. 
You know, I don't, I don't speak the kings, queens, or uh, nobody English. Look at that. Ain't nothing but a, a rocket ash pit over there. Look at that. Go down to the other one. Look at that. God is not playing. Those are the indentions from the sofa falling from the sky. Imagine you coming outside, they hitting you in the top of your head, killing all cattle, all crop, all human beings, everything that's in sight, dropping in water. You trying to run in the water? No, it's heating up the water. You ain't doing nothing but getting in a big boiling pot. So God wasn't playing back then, and he ain't going to play when he hit the scene. Whenever he come back, no man know the time. All right, go from there, continue to read on. 25. The book of Genesis, chapter 19 and verse 25. And he overthrew those cities and all the plains and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind and she became a pillar of salt. Hey, look up. See if you can look up an image of um, Lot's wife. Well, what, what Lot's wife looked like today. We just showed it to you. They had, it was an image. It was an image like we just showed, and they had a red circle around it, and they said, that's like wife, that pillar of salt. We ain't going to worry about it. We ain't going to worry about it. Keep on reading. Verse 27, and Abraham gave up early in the morning to the place uh -huh. where he stood before the Lord, uh -huh. and he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and towards all the land of the plain, and beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up at the smoke of a furnace. God going to turn this place into a smoke of furnace as well. Read on. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow. Uh -huh. When he overthrew the cities, and the which Lot dwelt. And uh -huh. Lot went up out of Zoar and dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in a cave. And he and his two daughters. So Lot dwelt in a cave because he feared the destruction that, it, that was the Lord was bringing back, that he was bringing on the earth at that time. Go from there. Go to uh, Leviticus 18, verse 22. And then we're going to go to Leviticus 20, and verse 8, verse 13. Yeah, 18, 22. Yes, sir. The book of Leviticus, chapter 18, and verse 22. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not lie with mankind. As with womankind. Uh -huh. It is abomination. God said, look, we shouldn't do this. It is abomination. Go to 20 and verse 13. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20 and verse 13. Uh -huh. If a man also lie with mankind, as he led with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Uh -huh. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So back then in biblical time, in the ancient time, you were put to death. That's the reason why it's very important for Christ to come and hit the scene because you don't have to die by stone. You don't have to be put to death no more for those acts. All you have to do is repent, come from out of your sins, and draw closer to the Lord by keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. All right, from there, give me Ecclesiastes, Sirach 15, verse 12, and verse 13. Because we got to figure out, okay, if you commit these acts, well, I'm going to die. Well, God said this. God said, God said you're an abomination. And let's see how he feels about you being an abomination. Read on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 15 and verse 12. Uh-huh. Say not thou, he hath called me to err, for he hath no need of the sinful man. God said he didn't cause you to err, and he ain't got no need for you committing sin that goes against him. Read. The Lord. Oh, abomination. It says God hates you. When you're in the midst of abomination, y'all sisters that wearing those pants that don't think judgment is going to come upon you swiftly for the dress code that God created that you're going against, God said you abomination. I'm going to deal with you in that day. Read on. And they that fear God love it not. It says the people that fear God, we don't love the things that go contrary to God. Because we got to understand the love and the order of God is set up by our actions. Give me that in, in um, Exodus 22, 16. The book of Exodus, 
chapter 22 and verse 16. This is the order of God. Read what you got. And if a man entice a maid. So you got a man and a maid, meaning a woman and a man. Read. That is not betrothed. Uh-huh. And she's not promised to be married to somebody. Read. And lie with her. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. And he lie down with her, meaning they commit the act. They do the bumping and the grinding. And that man got to marry that sister. That's how it's supposed to be. We in Exodus. We, we read it in Genesis where God created Eve for Adam and not Adam for Eve, which some of y'all would believe contrary to popular belief. All right, from there, give me Romans 1, 26 through 32. Read quick. The book of Romans, chapter 1 and verse 26. Uh-huh. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile effects. Hey, get that video ready. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Out the Romans, read. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lusts one toward another. Uh -huh. Men with men, working that which is unseemly. God said that thing is unseemly, read. And receiving in themselves the recompense of the error which was meek. That's an error when you do that, read. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. So one thing the hardest people to teach to give understanding to is those spirits that be with man on man and woman on woman. That's a strong spirit because they so gun ho after their lust. It's an evil, wicked spirit on those people. But is it too late for them? No. It ain't too late. Read on. God gave them over to a reprobate mind uh -huh. to do these things which are not convenient. It says God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And they commit error. Read. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God. They hate God, read. Despiteful, uh -huh. proud. Very proudful. Read. Boasters, uh -huh. inventors of evil things. They say they inventors of evil things. Read on. Disobedient to uh -huh. parents, uh -huh. without understanding, uh -huh. covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, implacable, unmerciful, who know the judgment of God. They know the judgment of God, read. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. They know they got death waiting on them, read on. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them. That do them. And they have pleasure in them that do them. So remember, it says they are inventors of evil things. Let's see what they invented. Let's see when you have this spirit, what is the evil invention that's behind it? Put that on. Play that real quick. Supposed to be a quiet reading time with drag queen Panda Dulce. Look what we like have this. here. Did you guys call the cops? And look at them. Look, the they raid the place um, because they know the you're event. not finna read the this to our kids. Saturday, you ain't finna put this type of mindset in our kids' mentality to have them and think that it's okay. Offensive slurs against the LGBTQ and they got enough sense to know that. They came in and they were screaming about like pedophilia and saying things like, we have to save the children. So that what comes from this evil spirit right here. The performer Panda Dulce didn't feel comfortable going on camera either. But in a statement, she says she immediately froze. And the hey, first thoughts that came across her mind, is it an ambush? Are they armed? And the massacre in Uvalde, Texas. That's when she, she says alive? she realized okay. they were defenseless. I don't know if they could Library staff say Facebook. the men wouldn't leave, and their rhetoric was escalating, so they called the sheriff's office immediately. We removed the performer. From All the right, room, now go to the, to the, the, back, the drag queen out. And let's read. Yeah, the drag queen. It's called the drag queen hour. Okay. Nah, just look it up in Google. I think you'll be able to you'll be able to type it up in Google. And we're gonna read um what this what the base and the foundation of this movement is about. It should just be, you should just be able to copy it and paste it in Google and just type on it.
All right, go to that first one. Should go to their page. The, the first thing they got, inspire authenticity. Um, creativity. I mean, creativity, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Gotcha. Authenticity, whatever that damn word is. It went so fast, I ain't know what it say. Yeah, uh, uh, authenticity. Authenticity. Yeah, creativity. Empathy. Right, yeah, I let you see it. <laughs> All right, go down, scroll down. You get the gist of it, Israel. Ah, right there. What is Drag Story Hour? Read that. It is just what it sounds like. Storytellers using the art of drag to read books to kids in libraries. Now, why they choose to read it to kids? It's a certain agenda that goes against the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. Read on. Schools and bookstores. Uh-huh. DSH captures the imagination and play of gender flu fluid. Excuse fluency, me. fluidity, 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 whatever. Uh huh. Of childhood and give kids glamorous, positive, unbashful, unbashfully queer role models. Uh huh. Read on. And spaces like this, kids are able to see people. Listen, listen real closely. Watch them now. Read. Who defy rigid gender restrictions? Uh huh. And imagine a world where everyone can be their authentic selves. So it says in a world where people can imagine to be their authentic selves. Now, hold on. Copy authentic. And we're going to Google what authentic mean. The mean it says is give kids so they able to see people to defy them in an authentic way to where they can be them authentic selves. Their authentic selves. Let's look up the word authentic. Right there. Authentic. Mm-hmm. Of undisrupted origin. All right, now, go down. Right there. The third, based on facts. Okay. Mm-hmm. Based on facts. Uh-huh. Accurate or reliable. Now, go to the sum of the synonyms. Synonyms. Hit the arrow. Reliable. Uh-huh. Dependable. Uh-huh. Trustworthy. Trustworthy. Read. Authoritative. Uh-huh. Honest. Honest. Faithful. Faithful. Accurate. Accurate. Exact. Uh-huh. Factual. Factual. True. Uh-huh. Truthful. Uh-huh. Very, very, very Yeah, the next one. I want the next one. <laughs> True to life. Truth to what? True to life. Now go back. Go back to the drag story hour. Now read the bottom again in spaces like this to read the bottom. And spaces like this, uh -huh. kids are able to see people. See drag queens, men that's looking and dressed like women. Read. Who defy uh -huh. rigid gender restrictions. Uh -huh. And imagine a world where everyone can be their authentic self. How the hell are you going to be your authentic self and you playing as if you a woman and you a whole man? You got a whole potato log in your pants. What the hell is this? We got to stop. We got to stop and just be honest. We got to call a kettle a kettle. We got to call a spade a spade. It is what it is. You a man. I'm not finna call you no her. Talking about um these dang on, um, what, what they call it? The dang on, um, what the words? Joint, joint, um, gender fluently and, 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 and I forgot all the words that they say they want to be called by. But it is what it is. You a man. You a whole man. You a man. I'm a man, Damon. Yeah. Hey, so go from there. Go to now we're gonna go to the kids category. Cause we need to why they choose to do this to the kids. Somebody that's very impressionable, somebody that's gonna whatever you tell them, the sky green. Oh, the sky green. The kids, they real impressionable. No, no, no. It ain't no um, it ain't no what you call me yet. All right, so read that in Proverbs 22 and verse 6, and then give me Deuteronomy 6 and 1. Yeah, yeah, we done with that. We don't need to see no more of that garbage. 22 verse 6. Uh-huh. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22 and verse 6. Uh-huh. Train up a child in the way he should go. Uh-huh. And when he is old. And when he win. When he is old. So they know when you train a child mind a certain way when they young, when they get old, what's going to happen? 
He will not depart from it. They know they're going to stay in the midst of that wickedness unless it becomes a great phenomenon in the earth. And they come across these words that's in the Bible that help convert and change their soul. That's the only thing that's going to be able to remove that spirit off them fully is the word of God. But they know we need to get them young because when we get them, when we get them young, by the time they get old, they're going to already fully commit to the plan that we had implemented when they was children. Now give me that in Deuteronomy 6 and 1. Don't, put, don't ever put your mic down. I need your mic always in your hand, ready to read. Because I got so many scriptures to the point where you ain't going to never stop reading. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 1. Read what you got. Now, when, now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, which the Lord your God commands to teach you, uh -huh. that ye might do them. And the land whether you go to Even protect. Even in this land, America, read on. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God uh -huh. to keep all his statutes uh -huh. and his commandments, which I command thee. Thou and thy sons and thy sons' sons uh -huh. all the days of thy life, uh -huh. and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, that ye may increase mightily, and the Lord God of thy fathers have promised thee. And the land that floweth with milk and honey. That's the kingdom. Jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Shall be in your mind to do what? Read. And thou shalt teach diligently unto thy children. And we supposed to teach this Bible diligently unto the children. So they won't depart from the ways of this book. The commandments that God gave them. But what the heathen do? The heathen said, no, nah, we can create something else we can create the agenda of making them believe as a boy that they can be indeed a girl because the mind is very influential when they are kids read on and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up all right so get that other Get that other um, video. Um, out the Deuteronomy six and seven. Um, it's just out the Deuteronomy six and seven. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I put it in the feed. So. It's another. Is I know it's another um video like the drag queen video. And break. Yeah, that's the video right there. Now, they commit this wickedness, and then they go and make men look like women and read the kid. But look what be in the mix of, of that foolishness, of that wickedness. It's always something. All right? Y'all got it? We have just confirmed that a registered child sex offender has been reading to children. They got a registered child sex offender in a library reading to kids. You can't make this stuff up. Been trying to put an end to the program. A media spokesperson for the library confirms one of those drag queens, Tatiana Malanina, is really Alberto Garza, a child sex offender. In 2008, he was convicted of assaulting an eight-year-old boy. An eight-year-old boy. Most your parents would not allow that individual to sit in this library, sashay in, and be held up as a role model to our children. See, that's when Shame they get mad. You, that's the end of the video. That's when they get mad when they possibly reach their kids. As long as it's only affecting our kids, oh, they ain't outraged. They ain't in an uproar. But as soon as it reaches close proximity of their kids, Hey, they go out and march and protest and go to the lobbyists and, and, and go to different political platforms and, and raise all type of hell in holy matrimony. Because they know if that spirit run rapidly through their nation, 
it's going to cause them to be null and void. It's going to cut off them as a nation. Because, see, they can't do that to us. We're going to populate regardless because we're the sand of the seas. We are unnumberable amount of people because God made us that way. One thing about us, we're going to get it in. Yes, we're going to get it in until we, in the more oppression that comes down on us, you ain't going to do nothing but make us populate more and more. Ask the Egyptian in their time in Exodus 1. We're going to get it in. If we can't do nothing else, and we got some alcohol, some blues, and getting it in, we going to be all right. But we got to make sure we're keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. All right, so go from there to Proverbs 22, 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22 and verse 15. Uh-huh. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. They know that. Foolishness lie in the heart of kids. They do foolish things. Read on. But. The rod of correction uh -huh. shall drive it far the from them. The rod of from correction, them. mean the actual rod and this Bible would drive it out far from them. All right, so grip that in X verse 3 and verse 19 real quick. And then we're going to Psalms 19 verse 7. Because if you, let's just say you battle in that spirit. Is it over for you? The book of Acts. Chapter 3, verse 19. No, it is not too late to repent as long as you got breath in your lungs. Read on. Repent, ye therefore, uh -huh. and be converted, uh -huh. that your sins may be blotted out. That your sins may be washed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Read. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Just repent before God send Christ back to destroy this earth. All right, from there, give me the um, Psalms 19, verse 7. Let's see what's going to help convert you. What's going to change that spirit to where you think that you're a woman while you're a man, and we're going to get that spirit off to you to know that you are indeed a man and only a man. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. Uh -huh. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So God's laws convert your soul. Give me that in Psalms 119, verse 9. So that's the only thing that's going to be able to convert your soul. God, law, statutes, and commandments are the only thing that is spiritual enough to change your mind, mentality, and your actions. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 119. Nine. Verse, verse nine. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? So how are you supposed to clean your ways? How are you supposed to convert your soul? Read. By taking heed thereto, according to... To thy word. You got to take heed to what the word say. So the word said, look, man shouldn't lie down with mankind as with womankind. You can't no longer go into the mangina that you once went to. You got to refrain from having that spirit on you. Why? Because it's key to your salvation. All right, from there, give me that Young Generation video. Next. Ago. It's a young generation. Girl, why, is you, why is you doing this to me? Yesterday you was just saying that you wanted to be with me. Now today I bring up I'm pregnant. You don't. We're That's what cousins. Okay. We're, we're okay. Cousins. okay. We're cousins. It's your fault. We're cousins. It's your fault. I have a baby. It's I your fault. You never told me it was related. I'm not having. You kept it from me. We have a baby. I'm not having he a baby with my cousin. kept it from her up until the time Girl, she you got are pregnant. the reason why this happened. You not even me. This the mentality you of the young generation. Me. All you do is lie. And you never want to own up to the shit you do. Tell them how I caught you on the bed with a man three months ago. Look, she done caught him hey, in the bed with a man. Why are you doing this to me? All right, kill that video. She yes. done caught him in the bed. That's what these young gent man, is crazy. That's why, look, that's why it'll behoove you not to keep these commandments. To keep these commandments. Because when you come amongst us, guess what? We ain't going to hook you up with no any sister, any brother. 
We got to know your works. We got to know what you used to deal with. We're going to have to deal with you for a, a certain period of time for us to come into the understanding that, okay, now that brother's spirit is all right. He ain't got that spirit on him no more. Okay, that sister all right. She ain't got that spirit on her no more. But you still got to work out your own salvation. We can only give you references on who to marry. But it's up to you to be able to do a diligent search and prove that spirit to know that your spirit is combative. I mean, con your spirit is um, compatible. I said combative. Compatible with the other significant other spirit. All right, so read what you got. Read it. No, hold on. Wait, that, give me, give me the, yeah, the old generation. Give me the entertaining industry. Entertaining industry. Yeah, I love this drink. Well, you my bed, I like daddy. when you like this, daddy. Yeah, you hear him? Daddy, I like when you when you're scrambling and scrambling. Calling a, a whole nother like grown that. man, daddy. Yeah. It's the entertaining industry that a lot of our people want to be a part of. Yeah, I love this drink. Well, you put my bed, I like daddy. when you like this, daddy. Yeah, yeah, you my bed, daddy, I like when you Look how they look. Won't nobody speak up. These are grown ass men that's listening to this man. Then he giving him a cake. And then he blew on it. Come on, man. Look back on where I became. And look how they speaking. They ain't even speaking like men. Their body posture is uncomfortable. They letting this man determine the whole spirit of the room. We party for my birthday before. You can't Look how he's speaking. We did party for my birthday. Lord willing, the Lord give these men they testicles back to want to stand up for his sake and not for this wickedness that they in the midst of and these different industries that they are part of. Our people got to come out of there. Hey, Lord Will, hey, uh, Brother Fabulous, uh, and, and the rest of these brothers, man, come out of the weakness. Hey, give me the next video after that. People that's unpredictable. His next video, you started at 1 minute and 30 seconds. I think it's going into his security guy. So you got the entertaining industry. Let's see what else we got. How far this this agenda go? In the last interview, me and just you did, you said that Diddy and Kim Porter were swingers. And a lot of people was wondering, yo, in the comment session, how do you know that, yo? Like, was you doing security when they was doing that or something? Because when they were in the room and this is P. Diddy's security. they were going in the room with another couple, right? And I've seen some things happen in the jacuzzi. Like, when I... I'm the only one could go to the room nine times out of ten. When Puff, I'm sorry, when Puff was the one who, you know, was Puff in the be presidential suite, I'm the only one allowed. I got to watch the door. No one could get into that door. I'm the only one that had the pass key or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And then sometimes you would hear a, 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 a boo 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 a thump or whatever the situation is and stuff like that. I have, yo, what's up? Everything good? And sometimes they will open the door. I'm right there by the door. Sometimes you see things you don't want to see. Hey, did they ever try to um, get you involved? Or, Not at all. Or for you? Not at all. Puff did it one time, but that's in my book. It's, when he was coming from Dallas, he had the snow bunnies. And I reneged on that. Now nah, I'm good. Hey, did you see any celebrities Puffy did? Listen, listen, y'all, watch this. Stuff with, the swinger stuff with? Yeah, I did. 
Tell me about that. He come to plan on shit. Uh, he said, because he said it in another video and he exposed time, the names. Him and uh, somebody, him, Sarah, and this young girl flew from Atlanta. And they, um, and flying from Atlanta, we had this artist with us. Fast forward about five minutes. Right. Five seconds, I mean. And we were standing in the presidential suite at. And this particular artist and Puff, they told me, don't let nobody come in the room. So I said, all right, cool. So I, I propped my chair by the room door while they went in the art, they went in. So this artist cousin knocked on the door. So I went to him and I let him in because I knew him, I see his face and everything. I seen his face several times before. He said, yo, I got to speak to my cousin. And I said to him, I said, well, they busy right now, man. And they told me don't let nobody come in the room. There's two said, men in the room. room and he's protecting. Out. He said, hey, they said, busy. Bro. Busy doing they what? Come in the room, get your cousin out. They told me nobody yeah, man, go in the room. So he said, I don't care who you are, what you're doing like that. I'm going to get my cousin. He went to go and try to open the room. I grabbed his ass, joked him up, and slammed him on the piano. And, I, and the next thing you know, Puff and his artists run out the room naked. And so then I said, I see the artist trying to grab a towel. Puff didn't give a shit. And um, the artist's like, yo, what's wrong? What's going on? What's going on? He's like, yo, Gene, that's my cousin. And I was like, yo, my man, he was trying to get in the room. And y'all told me don't let nobody else come in, let nobody come in this room. Jesus Christ gonna have to come take the puff no. Jesus gonna have to take the, the, the air out of my body if anybody coming in that room. And Puff just looked at the artist, and the artist said, You ain't wanna come up in there. It was a lot of freaky shit going on. Alright, we're gonna cut it, man. <laughs> hey, that's that crazy. Hey, give me the next <laughs> video of the church. We're going to go, hey, we're going to hit every little area. We're going to try to hit every little area. Because this spirit runs rapidly in the Christian church. All the way up to the Pope and the kids. Yeah, this, some of y'all know him. Some of y'all know him. Y'all love all his songs. But listen to him. Listen closely. And look at his body posture. His damn, he looked like he got scoliosis. His back just ain't right. Read what you got. I said, I said, read. Play that. I said, read what you got. I didn't know how to have the relationship. I didn't know really what a woman wanted. He ain't know what a woman wanted. I've messed up more than I've, than I've had good. My past relationships were a sprinkling of everything. Uh. Men and women. Men and women. I don't know how to do this. And because of that, when things get rough, I go back into my safe place. My music and my ministry. Cut that. The music that y'all also love and the ministry that y'all also love. These up, listen, y'all got to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. Because these people y'all lead, they lead y'all astray. And y'all, some of y'all are diehard fans of Dunny McClurkin. Praise is what you do. Yeah, praise is what you do do, the doo-doo box. Y'all got to stop it. It's nasty. Some of y'all are just pure D nasty. And y'all like it. But the Lord looking down in disgust, and he going to destroy you if you don't get that spirit off you. The heathens roll like that. We didn't, we, we, when we roll like that, God set up laws for us. All right, so. Man, boy, time. No, it flies. Man, give me 2 Corinthians. I, I, shoot. Second, I mean, 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians 10. 
the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2 and verse 10. Uh -huh. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth. Because y'all don't want the truth of this Bible that God said thou shalt not do it and y'all still do it, read. That they might be saved. That they might be saved, read. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. And that strong delusion is that homosexual spirit that you have on you. That's the reason why Dunham McClurkin, he in the Christian church, he sings, everybody know him. He has the notoriety of the world, but still, he don't know how to get that spirit off him because the church ain't teaching you repentance. The Israelites are. Read. That they should believe a lie. Now he believed that he can't get over that spirit. So he got to go back to his dark place. He got to go back to singing in ministry. Why y'all follow him blindly. Read. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. Hey, give me that real quick of Obama passing the law. Give me that real quick of Obama, your favorite president that you cried for. I ain't going to even lie, Israel. Hey, I was in college. <laughs> and a lot of people don't know this. I was in college when, uh, y'all let me know where y'all get the video. But I was in college with Obama one. And uh, the guy that I hang, I hung out with or whatever, he had a red Z71 um, truck, Chevrolet truck. Tell me why I, I had a, a red robe at that time for some reason. I was on the hood of this man truck. When they announced Obama won, guess what? I was on the hood of his truck in a red robe and some boxers pouring milk all over me. Now, what? why would I do that? I don't know. I wasn't right. But that's what I did because it was a black president as the dang old president of America. And I did that. Israel, look, forgive me. I wasn't in my right state of mind. <laughs> but, hey, that's a fun fact about me. Officer Day, I, I see Memphis. I stand on it. You know, I was in the middle of wickedness. But, hey, play that, man, real quick. Recognize that the Constitution guarantees marriage equality. In doing so, they've reaffirmed that all Americans are entitled to the equal protection of the law. That all people should be treated equally, uh, with the exception of regardless blacks, of who they are and Native or Americans. who they love. This decision will end the patchwork system we currently have. It will end the uncertainty hundreds of thousands of same-sex couples face from not knowing whether their marriage legitimate in the eyes of one state will remain if they decide to move or even visit another. This ruling will strengthen all of our communities. All right, so kill that. Offering so this is your favorite president. Loving same this is what he did when you elected him in office because he was a black man. Oh, he was the devil that the Bible speaker. The first, the only thing that he did was made the banks richer and made the law be passed where a man can lay with man and be married and women can lay with women and be married. And that goes against God laws. All right, go from there to Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 9. The book of a clean. Oh. Mm hmm. No, Sirach, Sirach. No, Mm hmm. The book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 10, verse 9. Uh -huh. Why is earth and ashes proud? Uh -huh. There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. It says, why is earth is and ashes is proud? Read on. For such as one said it is own soul to sell. It says they sell their own soul for sale. They put a price on their soul, and their soul don't even belong to them. It belongs to God. And that's what all people do when they get in the midst of this wickedness, and they go into these different industries. They sell a soul. And what follows behind? Because if you sell your soul, you'll sell something else. Read on. Because while he liveth, he casteth away his bow. He cast away his bow. He give his rectum up to man and cause erectile dysfunction. He let them have pleasure with his mangina. This is what they do. They give up their bows. Kill it. Go to... um. Five, play five. I ain't even got five minutes. Play the, the book breaking. Book breaking real quick. We're going to end it on here. And, and Give me 1 Corinthians 6 and 9.
We're gonna have to end it on there, Israel. Hey, Shalom, no Israel, more. Most High Christ bless. Hey, this ten minutes of truth with Captain Hoshia. Hey, uh, today I'm gonna do a quick lesson on book breaking. I want y'all to check out this video. Uh, it's called uh, Deep: The History of Male Slave Rape, Book Breaking, and the Word Mother. 2016. And controlling the people. You had a ship full of African men, women, and children who were at the mercy of the captain and all the sailors on that crew. And those men could have sex with anybody they wanted to. The women, the children, and the men. And they you said forget about slavery. Tied down with these white men. There ain't no women there for the most part. When they start bringing women, they weren't even bringing women. They were bringing girls between the ages of 6 and 15 and raping them all. But they also were raping the men. Same things were happening on the plantation to demasculinize the black man. Control the slave population is uh, to rape a father in front of his sons uh, or to take the biggest, baddest black man on the plantation and do something horrible to him to completely humiliate and emasculate him so the people won't respect him anymore. I and, kill that uh, video. That so that's what that's what the agenda is. They did it in slavery. How they do it now in the industry when our people sell a soul for cheap. They sell a soul for cheap and, 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 and go in there and get it give, give give it up. They go in there and give it up. I'm gonna go over a little bit. I gotta go over here. I got to go over. All right, so book break. Give me that in um first Corinthians six and nine real quick. The book of first Corinthians, chapter six and verse nine. Uh huh. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Read. Be not deceived, neither fornicator, nor adulterer, uh -huh. nor adulterous, nor effeminate. Uh, no nor what? Nor effeminate. You can't even have a spirit of effeminate on you. You can't be an effeminate man rolling with God. You got to be a masculine, godly man. Read. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. You can't be abusing yourself with mankind, meaning you giving up your bowels. All right, go from there to 1 Kings 2. 1 Kings 2 and verse 2. Give me the point. Go straight to the point. And if you is abusing yourself with mankind, stop it, Israel, right now. While you got lungs to breathe air in, stop. Read. The book of 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 2. Uh -huh. I go the way of all the earth. Uh -huh. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. He says, show yourself a man. How? Read. And keep the toils of the Lord thy God uh -huh. to walk in his way Read. and to keep his statutes uh -huh. and his commandments uh -huh. and his judgments Read. and his testimonies uh -huh. as it is written in the law of Moses. He said keep all the laws that it was written in, like it's written in Moses because Moses gave the law. All right, from there, go to Matthew 24 real quick. In verse 38. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 38. Because the earth was destroyed back then in Sodom and Gomorrah time. Well, not the earth, but in that area for the wickedness. But God said he's going to come back and destroy the earth this time with fire. Read on. For as in the days that were before the flood. So just like in the days of Noah when the flood came, read. They were eating uh -huh. and drinking uh -huh. and marrying uh -huh. and giving in marriage Read. until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Until Noah entered into the ark and God put his hand down and closed the ark up to where nobody could come inside. And God killed every human being that was on the face of the earth with water. He said, how are you coming back next time with fire? People know this, but what are you doing to preserve your soul and your body from that fire? It's going to be a judgment to come. I right, go over them there. Go to Revelation 20, verse 12. The book of Revelations, chapter 20, verse 12. Uh -huh. And I saw the dead, small and great, uh -huh. stand before God. And the books were open. And other books were open. It says the books were open and the other book was open. So you got several books that's being open. The book that you basically wrote with your actions in the earth when you occupied a living spirit and you walked the face of the earth and you got the other book which is the bible conducting how you're supposed to conduct yourself in the world in the in the earth read which is the book of life uh-huh and the dead were judged in the, out of those in the things. dead was what judged out of those things what you think in that book says that we would be judged according to 
God, law, statutes, and commandments. This is in the book of Revelations just about before the last two chapters. This is the 20th chapter. You got 20 and 22, 21 and 22. There's only two more chapters, and it's still talking about keeping the commandments at the end of the book. Read. Which were written in the book according to their works. Uh, according to their what? According to their works. According to your works. Go from there. Give me 2 Peter 3 and verse 10 real quick. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 10. Uh -huh. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, uh -huh. in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, uh -huh. and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What's going to cause the melt things with fervent heat? That nuclear bomb, that atom bomb, atomic bomb, nuclear destruction. Read. The earth also and the works that the, are therein shall be burnt up. All right, give me Zechariah, verse 13 and verse 9 says the earth going to be burnt up. Where your faith going to lie then? Where you going to lay it? Huh? Yeah, you. I'm talking to you. You that's listening and looking right now. Where is your faith going to be? Where is going to lie within that day and time? Read what you got. The yeah. book of Zechariah, chapter 13 and verse 9. Uh -huh. And I will bring the third part through the fire. It says, I will bring the third part through the fire. God is going to cut off two-thirds of the earth so imagine having a pie and slicing it into three areas two of those areas out of the three areas are going to be destroyed and god gonna only bring the one third through are you gonna be a part of that one third the only way you're gonna be a part of that one third is you doing what the bible said walking blameless in the earth according to the laws that god implemented in these scriptures all right give me that go from there and give me matthew 24 verse 30 The book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 30. Give 30, 31. 30, verse 31. Uh -huh. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Uh -huh. And they shall gather together his elect. He gonna gather together, they going to gather uh, the, um, together the elect, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American that God calls his chosen children, the children of Israel. Read on. From the four winds, uh -huh. from one end of the heavens uh -huh. to the other. So that's the reason why God called us Gentiles in the, New, in the New Testament, because we were scattered amongst all of the heathens, taken out of their customers. Like now, we are in America, but we are original Israelites. But what we do, we say we are African Americans, and we take custom to Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, all these different wicked holidays that they deem worthy to worship in this society. All right, from there, give me First Thessalonians real quick. Hey, give me that last video. Give me First Thessalonians 4 and verse 16. Read it real quick. The book of First Thessalonians. Yeah. First Thessalonians 4. The 16. book of First Thessalonians, chapter 4 and verse 16. Uh-huh. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. So it's Christ going to descend from heaven. Like I said, you're going to look up one day and he's going to be in the sky and it's going to be too late. Read. With the shout, with the voice of the archangel. And he's going to have the, the archangel with him. Read. And with the trump of God. Uh-huh. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And guess what I told you? When they put us to death, we're going to be the first one to rise when Christ hit the scene. For the big payback. Read. Then we which are alive. And remain shall be caught up together. So the, 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 the Christian church, they state this as the rapture. Being caught up in the air of Christ. Read. With them in the clouds. Uh-huh. To meet the Lord in the air. Uh-huh. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we shall ever forever be with the Lord. Now, they just, I just got this video to kind of give you some type of imagery behind it. But this ain't how it's going to really go down because these are the heathens. But play that real quick. That's how it's going to be. The angels that's going to snatch us up and take us in the air where Christ is. Now, never mind who's playing the part. I'm just trying to help y'all have some type of imagery behind with the system. Stay in my shadow. Why? Just 
do as I say. Hail thou, great god Ra. Normally when a bird lands on my boat, I kill it before it can shit. What is this? You dare bring a mortal to the source of creation? He's valuable to me. I could not leave him behind. Ah. Why have you come? I would only ask something of you. Ah, well, in that case, I shall stop what I'm doing and heed your bidding. Grandfather, I'm sorry. I mean, no disrespect. You don't know the difference. Stay there. Be quiet. I have work to do. They know we was the only people in the earth that possessed this type of power to do such things. They would have you to believe that they able to do those things. That's why all children look at them as God. As Jesus. And put the mortal below deck if you want him to live. I trust it. I see that in Ezekiel 1 verse 5. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 1 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Also, out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Uh -huh. And there was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. So these are the angels, Reed. And every one had four faces. So these angels had four faces. And every one had four wings. Four wings. And their feet were straight feet. Uh -huh. And the soles of their feet were like the soles of a cow's so foot. So it's like they had cow's feet. Because, you know, cow's feet, they created to run fast throughout the earth. Your deer, your roe, all of those things. Read. And they sparkled like the color of burnished bread. Like the color of what? Burnished bread. Yes, these angels were black. Read. And they had the hands of a man under their wings, uh -huh. on their four sides. And they, and they four had their faces and their wings. Verse 10. Verse 10. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man uh -huh. and the face of a lion they on had the a right side. The face of a man and a lion, read. And they four had the face of an ox of on an the left ox side. On the, left. the four also had the face of an eagle. And they had a face of an eagle. So this is the creature, this is the angel. All right, go from there and get me Bill of the Dragon. Oh, it's going to take you a while on that one. I think I need one in 33. 36. So that's the that's the correct description of the angel. That what you just saw, like I said, I was giving you that only for um to give you an example, not for imagery, because they have the wrong people playing the roles. They know not to give that role to us because our people will look at us as gods and not them and they know that uh, that'll create a problem in the earth which they already know that we are gods on earth because we act like it according to the scriptures but read what you got the book of bell and the dragon uh -huh. chapter 1 verse 33 uh -huh. now there was in jury a prophet called Habakkuk, who had made pottage and had broken bread in a bowl uh -huh. and was going into the field for to bring it to the reaper. So this is Prophet Habakkuk. He going in the field to feed the reaper. So he, you know, he got food to feed them or whatever, you know. But the angel of the Lord said unto Habakkuk, Go, carry the dinner that thou hast into Babylon unto Daniel, uh -huh. who is in the lion's den. He said, look, go carry the food to Daniel, who's in the lion's den. Go carry the food to him because he going to need something to eat. Feed me. Read. And Habakkuk said, Lord. I never saw Babylon. Neither do I know what the den is. Say, I don't know what the den is. I ain't never been to Babylon, Reed. Then the angel of the Lord took him by his, the crown and bare him by the hair of his head. Man, the angel snatched him up by his head and took him and did what? And through the vehemency of his spirit set him in Babylon Man, over the den. Man, he through the vehemence of his spirit and set him in Babylon, teleport. Move him from one place to the other. By the crown of his head, he took him from one place to another. All right, so from there, go to Daniel. Go to Daniel 7 and verse 9 and verse 13. So we're going to get the most high God, how they look, and Christ, how he looked to cast down the imagination of that wickedness that we just saw. So our people won't get it twisted. These are the last two scriptures, Israel. We're going to end it out. Get that Daniel 7, verse 9, and then jump to verse 13. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. The Father and the Son. I beheld 
to the throne were cast down. Uh -huh. And the ancient of days did sit. So he said, look, in that day and time, all of the kingdoms fell, and the ancient of days did sit. That means he was older than days. This is the most high God. Read. Whose garment was white as snow. And he had a garment, which means the only way you have a garment, why is it bringing up garment? Because he had a body. Read. And the hair of his head, like the pure wool. And he had hair, and he had head, and he had a head, and he had hair on his head. Read. His throne was like the fiery flame. Uh-huh. And his wheels as burning fire. Verse 13. Verse 13. I saw in the night vision. Uh-huh. And behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven uh -huh. and came to the ancient of days. So the Son of Man, which is Christ, came to the ancient of days, which is the Most High, his Father, read. And they brought him near before him. And they brought him near before his father. So these are the descriptions of how Christ and the father look. No, no, get, um, no, get where, where it had the color. Now, the only person that can have Willie hair is the so-called blacks. Hispanic and Native American. Get his actual description. The actual description. Uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 6. Uh-huh. His body. Also was like the barrel, uh -huh. and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as a lamps of fire, Three. and his arms and his feet like in color. It said his arms and his feet. Remember Christ said, if you seen me, you've seen the Father. His arm and his feet was in color. But when, the, when you read Revelation, they said, oh, his, face, his head was white. No, that's the power that came from him because you can't look upon him. As a man in your fleshly body. You have to be immortal. But read on. And feet like in color. To polish bread. To polish bread. Brass. Read. And a voice of his words. Like the voice of a multitude. It was like a voice of many waters. So that's show Christ. That's show most high. That's the description of him. So don't get swayed in what we said. We showed you. Just know. We're going to go back to being immortal. Last scripture. Give me 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53. I ain't had this one now. This is the last scripture. I promise you, Israel. This is what's going to happen when Christ hit the scene. You ain't got to worry about the body that we in. I got knee problem. I got back problem. I ain't got no circulation that's circulating in my, in, the, in, in my feet like it's supposed to. My feet go numb when I stand up in one place too long. My back go to hurt because I got scoliosis. His body jacked up. But in that day and time, what's going to happen? Read what you got. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15 and verse 52. Uh-huh. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Just like you, if you was to blink your eye, it's going to happen just that quick. Read. At the last trump. At the last trump. Read. For the trump shall sound. Uh-huh. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. So we're going to be changed. This fleshly body that we have. That can, that can be destroyed with fire, with a gun, with, 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 with water being drowned, with, all, with, with, te with teeth the wild beast. It said it, we're going to be changed from that mortal body and changed into immortality, meaning we can't be destroyed by nothing on the earth. We can go up there and fly and sit right there by the sun in close proximity and play with the sun because we're going to be a mortal being in the earth. Read. And this mortal must put on Immortality. Read. So when this corruptible shall have put on in corruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, uh -huh. then shall be brought to pass uh -huh. the saying that is written, that is swallowed up in victory. What is swallowed up? That is swallowed up in victory. Ain't no more dying, ain't no more praying, ain't no more crying. In that day and time, Israel, we're going to get a new body. And that body is going to be able to live forever like God said we were supposed to do before Adam messed up and listened to the woman. So you women, you sit back and let the men lead you to the kingdom that God promised us from the beginning. And with that, Israel, I hope you glean some type of understanding and wisdom from this class. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Shalom, most high in Christ bless. Yeah, uh, fly through the air.
clear as I had to fulfill my purpose. To shake the whole earth with a boom when I hit the surface. They trembling nervous. They know I'm coming for certain. Tomorrow, all these niggas devour all of these serpents. I patiently waited to turn up with fervent heat now that I'm activated. I'm a blow cause it's World War three. I hear you weeping. You're mourning. You're nasty to the T. Hiroshima and Nakasaki ain't got nothing on me. I was raised by chemists. I was made for the judgment. Don't be testing my limits. Don't be pushing my buttons. In the Bible, they call me flame and rebuke. And you know that that's the truth. But my homies call me nuked. I'm in nuked. I was sent here to destroy pleasures and sins. In the day of darkness, even darker than when the day begins. Annihilation, no time for evacuations. When these warheads split, it look worse than decapitations. Whoa. Repent and die, such a genocide, or it's genocide. You can't hide if you get left when the saints rise. The wicked looking in the sky, and all they can do is cry, and they already know why, because you're judged. Gave up sin and started living righteous. It's who I am, I knew I couldn't fight this. When Christ come back, it's gonna be some morning. You never know the song could be your final warning. Judgment day, judgment day. When we crack the sky, judgment day, judgment day. We're gonna die, judgment day. You say only God can judge me. Well, trust me, you don't wanna see judgment day. And